Hello and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo and today we are going to be corralling clefts. That's right, I'm going to show you how to corral your clefts. <laughs> I've got a file set up here with a piano part and I've got some notes in here that are not quite appropriate for their clef and require some clef changes. So what we're going to do is find our clef tool in the main tool palette and it's very simple to change a clef in Finale. All we need to do is select the measures that we want to change in the clef tool, double click, and we get the change clef dialog box. Okay, now from here we can select any of these clefs. Um, the one I want here in this instance is the treble clef, and that's easy enough, all right? There is a second way to get to that very same dialog box. If you're in the clef tool and you have your measure selected, just right click, select clef and the same dialog box appears okay you can even get to that dialog box without even being in the clef tool so now i'm in the selection tool and i can uh, right click from my contextual menu and pull up clef and the same dialog box appears and you know what i'm going to put it in tenor clef why not this time um, I'm a piano player. If you ever put pia a piano part in a tenor clef, I would not know what to do. So <laughs> I wouldn't recommend doing that. Anyway, but let's. There is a fourth way that I want to show you how to do this. If we're in the clef tool, we can double click on this to get to our our uh, dialog box here. And you'll notice in the upper left corner of each clef there are numbers on the top row and letters on the bottom row, one through nine, and then A through I. Right. These are going to be meta tools. Right. They're going to uh, represent how to get to that clef without even entering this dialog box. So from the clef tool, I have the measure selected. If I hit one, I get the treble clef. Four will give me the bass clef again, and one will get me the treble clef. I, you know, y you don't have to memorize all of them. I, I basically have one and four memorized because those are the most common uh, clef changes I make. So um, that's how you would do that. So four ways to change the clef in finale right there. Um, we can do uh, mid-measure clef changes pretty easily. All we have to do is a, a partial bar selection. So f for example, right here I want to change this into, put that in the treble clef. And actually I'm going to select to the end of the next empty measure. And again, just press 1 for my treble clef. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I want these notes to be in the bass clef. And I'm going to extend that ex selection, selection all the way to there. Press 4, and now we're in the bass clef. Pretty easy stuff, right? Um, let's see. There's a couple other things I want to show you in this dialog box. So below here, you'll see uh, we have show clefs when needed, never, and always. So when needed is basically what it sounds like. Finale is going to only show the clef when it's needed. So in this fourth measure, for example, right, we don't need another treble clef in the left hand right here. Oops, sorry. Right, we just need this one and then it's implied. But you could, if you really wanted to, um, click always and it'll reappear. So now you have another courtesy clef. There are probably some occasions where that might be handy, but most of the time you're probably not going to need it. Um, but let's get rid of that. Put that back to when needed. The never option. Now I've got a part of this uh, piano chart has what would be like a, a lead sheet type of music right here, right? So if I select the entire uh, right hand in these eight bars, double click, and I hit never, it disappears. Same thing for the bass clef, never, and it disappears. This is kind of handy in, in certain lead sheet situations where you just want to eliminate those clefs, right? So that's how you would do that. Um, there's also a way to select measure the measure region you want to change uh just in case you forgot to select all the measures you, you know start in measure nine you're like ah, i want to go to measure 16 you can manually enter enter that and do whatever you need to let's say i'm going to go back to never show the clef again right um and then obviously measure nine through the end of the piece it'll change your clef through the end of the piece or uh, measure nine to next clef change. If I were to have another clef change somewhere along the line, the 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 changes that I made from nine to next clef change would stop at that clef change, as it says. Pretty obvious. All right, and then one last thing I'm going to show you is this option here called place clef after bar line. 
Now, most of the time, you don't want to do that. The standard procedure is the, that the cleft goes the cleft goes before a bar line when it's uh, in between um, when it's in the middle of a system like it does right here. That is the appropriate way to do that. But every once in a while, you end up with a situation where it might be handy to put it uh, after the bar line, and this is one of them. See, if I were to put my base cleft here, Finale would appropriately put the cleft change before the bar line. But with the first and second ending situation, this could be confusing because after this bar, you see the cleft change and then the repeat. And you go back up to the top and you think, wait a minute, is this bar supposed to be in, in base cleft now or treble cleft? The correct answer is it's supposed to be in treble cleft, but you can see how there could be some confusion there. right? So the way to do this is select your measures, change to base cleft, place cleft after bar line. And of course, sometimes you have to respace in Finale to get it to display appropriately. Now that's a little bit more um, practical. Not a, not technically correct, but it's it's a it's a better use of the cleft change right there, or it's a better way to use a cleft change. Um, so that is uh, corralling clefts. There's not much else to do within the cleft tool. That's basically what it does. Uh, come back for one more video about corralling clefts. I'm going to talk about some of the 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 options that you have in the in the document options for clefts, including uh, there's a cleft designer you can create your own clefts, but that'll be in the next video. So thanks for watching and come back for the next one.